American ballpark. Hey, Eugenio Suarez brought a sellout crowd to its feet with three runs batted in, including a big run scoring double. Jay Bruce banged one off the center field wall. That gave the Reds the four runs that they needed to back up six and two thirds innings of two run pitching from Rysel Iglesias. Iglesias could only sit and watch, though, as they had to nail it down in the ninth. And finally, Chappie left him happy. Iglesias got his second career victory. The Reds will try to take three of four from the Buccos next. Welcome to Great American Ballpark as Fox Sports Ohio brings you Cincinnati Reds baseball. Today, the final of the four game set. It's the Reds against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi, hello, and welcome to Cincinnati, everyone, along with the Cowboy Jeff Brantley and Jim Day. I'm George Grant. The hitting has improved. The pitching has been great this weekend, and now they'll turn it over to another one of those young pitchers today, Cowboy. Another young starter, and I, I think Reds fans can get used to this because we're going to see it time and time again. Different names. Today's name will be Kiva Sampson. Pitched out of the bullpen the other night. You see the numbers there in the minor leagues for Kiva Sampson. Came over during the winter from the San Diego Padres. Very firm fastball. Got his feet wet the other night out of the bullpen, as I said. Hard sinking fastball. The key today will be how he approaches these hitters the second time around. He seemed very comfortable that first time out, George. He'll go against a veteran, Charlie Morton, who's had some success against the Reds, so the veteran against the youngster. And really, the part of the story that we've been talking about all this weekend, and really since we left St. Louis, was improved offense from the Reds. Oh, has it ever. The hitting has been off the charts, especially Joey Votto. Votto not in the lineup tonight, but look at these numbers. Runs, first in the National League. Average home runs on base percentage. I mean, I don't know that you could do a whole lot more throughout the lineup than what the Reds are doing now. And it's not just one or two guys. It seems to be everybody putting the ball in play with regularity. A hero offensively, different hero every single night. Well, Jerry Naron used to say, keep the line moving offensively. The Reds have been doing that. They'll try to keep the runs moving. The Speedsters against the Buccos next. J.D. will have that story on Fox Sports Ohio. Was brought to you by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com.
by Chevy. Check out their award-winning lineup only at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Beautiful day at the ballpark. A little bit hot. Let's check out our local 12 weather where meteorologist Jim Day will tell you that it's 85 degrees and mostly sunny. How we looking? I'd say good. And indeed, I am Jim Day. And we want to salute Billy Hamilton because he's doing something that we haven't seen in a while. Last night, got on base and did what he does best. It's our IGS bringing the energy when he gets on base. He just disrupts whatever pitcher's out there. Fastest guy in the game, perhaps. And last night stole one, not one, but two bases. Whether he's going in head first or he's going in feet first, he usually beats the ball going to him. Last night, Garrett Cole couldn't believe that he stole second base. 51 steals most in the major leagues. First, red with 50-plus stolen bases in two consecutive seasons. Haven't done that for red since Eric Davis in 1986 and 87. Another MLB starting debut. Kiva Sampson, what you got? Reds and Pirates coming up next on Fox Sports Ohio. American ballpark the final of the four game set against the Pittsburgh Pirates for the Reds the Buccos come into town 58 year old Clint Hurdle celebrated his 58th birthday in game one of this series fifth season as pirate manager hey he once wore the Reds uniform back in 1982 as a player let's check his starting lineup as he's had through this whole series Gregory Polanco will be penciled in at the top of the lineup in the leadoff spot. Starling Marte, who was standing in the batter's box for the final out last night as the Reds hung on for a 4-3 victory, will bat second. Former MVP Andrew McCutcheon will hit in the number three spot. Jung Ho Gun, who's had the hot bat through the whole month of July and in this series, will hit in the number four spot. Switch hitting Neil Walker, the second baseman. Cervelli, the catcher. Alvarez Rodriguez. Sean Rodriguez will be your third baseman. And Charlie Morton, the pitcher, will bat in the number nine position. That's your Bucko lineup. This has been a year of Major League debuts. Five rookie pitchers. And add to that debut another rookie start, Cowboy, Kavis Sampson. Yeah, you look at Kavis Sampson and you see the body type. You think it's a big kid. He's got a strong arm. Now what you want to see is the transition from minor league pitching to big league pitching. When he came out the other night out of the bullpen, I thought he handled himself very well. Did not look intimidated whatsoever. But it's a little bit different when you're pitching one inning versus the expectation of pitching five or six. So we'll see how Kiva Sampson 
evolves here today in his first major league start. 17 games down at Louisville for Teddy Power and Delano De Shields, and he's not only making his major league debut this week with a two strikeout inning, he makes his first start up here too. Here's Polanco, Marte, and McCutcheon will follow. In tied at third. For the Reds is Todd Frazier. Polanco, if you stay back, he'll dump one down the third base line. He's tried to bunt his way on twice, once successful in this series. Overall, four homers and 30 knocked in for this bright young prospect. Pirates have good speed. They don't steal bases like the Reds, but they have good speed, especially defensively, and we've seen it come to the fore in this series. Three great plays by Marte. And a brilliant play by Polanco and Wright. So speed doesn't always just translate into Billy Hamilton's speed on the base pass. Sometimes it's the defense that makes a difference. What's the key for Sampson on this day, Cowboy? Well, Georgie's got to get ahead with the fastball. That's his main pitch. The breaking ball and the changeup are still developing. So if he gets behind in the count, these Pirates are going to sit on that fastball. So he's got to get ahead and keep it down, especially early. And no, he did not go around. They appealed down to third, and the third base umpire, Rob Drake, said no, he didn't go. So it's two balls and two strikes. DJ Rayburn's behind the plate. Joe West, the crew chief, at first. Now, the old days, you know, when you first came up, and of course, during the 70s, when the Big Red Machine was in power and the Pirates had the lumber company, this was the first ball fastball hitting lineup and it's similar here this Very lineup so. but will feast on fastball so you got to find another way to get them out. Well you saw the big breaking ball that got away from Barnhart there. That's not a breaking ball that lends itself to being consistent in the strike zone. It's more of a swinging miss type of breaking ball. Three two. Hopped up will there be room Barnhart gives chase uh -uh. it's back in the. Big time seats. You've sat down there behind home plate. Those are neat seats, aren't they? I actually have not. As a matter of fact, the only time that I have sat in the stands in the last 30 years was during the All Star game? Home Run Derby and really? the All Star game with my family. It's impressive. I it was fun there. too. Yeah, I, I loved it. I might make a pretty good fan. <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> all pretty lucky to be at the ballpark on any day. Hanging in there is Polanco trying to force Sampson to make a mistake. The count stays at three balls and two strikes. It'll be the eighth pitch of the at bat. This is the type of at bat that I'm talking about when you have a good fastball, but yet the secondary pitch is not a pitch that you're confident to throw a strike in, especially early. And he challenged him with a fastball there, but as you saw, that pitch was up and out of the strike zone. Polanco swung at ball four. High fastball. Up and out of the strike zone. Now if you can get hitters to chase that pitch all night. You don't have to throw a whole lot of secondary pitches but this Pirates club. They will not be swinging at that all night. Or all afternoon I should say. There's Starling Marte and if you were with us last night at the end of the ball game. Our oldest Chapman came in to attempt to pick up his 55th straight save here at Great American Ballpark, and he finally did convert it. But the tying run was at third, the go ahead run was at second, the bases were loaded. There's a swing and a high fly ball down the left field line. Given Chase's Schumacher, will he have room? How about that? <laughs> he had about six inches left, and Skip Schumacher will send Starling Marte back to the dugout. Marte still shaking his head. Good job by Schumacher. Find the wall, make the catch. You can see him reach out his hand, making sure he knew exactly where he was so he didn't get his shoulder caught into the padding as he leaped for the ball. Hey, give the fans a, a round of applause too, because there were a couple of them that looked they were going to stick the hands over, but they gave him room to make the catch. Good to get number six out of the batter's box. Two away, and here's McCutcheon. Marte is hit well against the Reds and in this series he's burned the Reds with some great defense. McCutcheon you know one of the best offensive defensive combos in all of baseball. An MVP. Brilliant defensively most of the time although he did misjudge a ball in center field last night that eventually led to a Reds run. And a triple for Marlon Byrd. One ball one strike. 
We've had about every combination of sight lines for hitters in this series. We've had some clouds. We've had bright outfield, dark infield, and today it is bright and sunshiny, which creates another challenge for hitters. And you've talked often about being able to get a grip on your breaking ball on this day, hot, sweaty day for whoever is on the mound. That's a breaking ball that delivers. I like two that one. Strikeouts in his debut inning the other night, and two strikeouts in his first debut start first inning. Last night, six sellout of the season, some 54,000, 44,000 in the ballpark last night. Let's check Brian Price's starting lineup brought to you by Meyer. Brandon Phillips back in the leadoff spot. In left, Skip Schumacher will get the start. Todd Frazier will hit in the number three hole, and Jay Bruce will hit cleanup. Marlon Bird moves from left to center field. Barnhart's the catcher. A. Eugenio Suarez, two sacrifice flies and a run scoring double, produced three RBI last night. De Jesus. In the lineup and Sampson will bat in the number nine position and here's the veteran right hander back from hip surgery back from Tommy John surgery and he'll make his 13th start of the year Charlie Morton. Hard sinking fastball he's going to average about six innings not a whole lot more than that. But the key for Morton is that sinking fastball. If he's got that working early in the game he can be awfully difficult because he gets those and that's ground balls. Let's check your forward defensive alignment for the Buckos. The Buckos come in next to last in defense in the National League. Only the Milwaukee Brewers have committed more errors. They've committed 77 errors on the season. Their defense in the outfield is at times spectacular. Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco, great speed. Rodriguez in for Ramos Ramirez at third. Josh Harrison still on the DL. Young at short, Walker at second, Alvarez over at first, and Cervelli the catcher for Morton. Dribble down the third baseline. Morton scoops, will fire, and they get him. Now, the debate will always continue. Do you lose speed sliding into first? Most will tell you that you do. And I think probably Skip thought there might be a tag in order, so he dives for the bag, but Morton makes a good play, and they nab him at first. Already seeing a little bit of the effects of the sinker of Morton. And we've seen him when he's been on the best of his games, and we've seen him when the sinker was just not anywhere near the strike zone on some of his worst day. Well, he gave the Reds all kind of fits about four or five years ago, 2011. He had his first two complete games against the Reds. Has a lot of torque 
in that wind up lands really hard on that front leg part that's part of the reason he had to have the hip surgery. Elbow surgery as well. Bottom line he's still out there and he's still pitching with some pretty firm velocity. Frazier left center field but they're making the catches Marte. One two three for the Reds in the first Sampson back to work. Here comes Gunn when we return. By Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. This has been the kind of year we've talked about, and especially now with Cueto gone and Leak gone, Cowboy. The rookie rotation, these numbers are just total innings pitch, not just starters innings pitch, but we're getting to find out who can pitch, huh? Young guns. And that's five of them. And I would imagine you could reach down in the minor leagues right now and bring five more and totally change the names. That tells you how much competition that there's going to be for the five starting spots or actually four starting spots because Homer Bailey is going to have one of them. That's a pop up guns retired Frazier squeezes it there's one away and here comes Neil Walker. Check your four defensive alignment for the Reds. The Reds continue to be solid defensively fourth in the league. Fifty one errors that's twenty six fewer errors than. The Bucko Schumacher and left with that fine play in foul territory. Bird moves to center and he's played there a lot over his career. And Jay Bruce, Gold Glove, Caliber, and Wright. Frazier, Suarez, Phillips, De Jesus for Joey at first, and Barnhart behind the plate. That's your forward defensive alignment. Here's the switch hitting Neil Walker batting from the left side against Sampson. 272, nine homers and 41 knocked in. I think you look at those names, George, the competition. Breed success. It kind of separates the chafe from the wheat. You find out who can actually do this starting job on a regular basis. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the guys that can't start are out. There are some guys that may be better suited pitching one or two innings out of the bullpen. And sometimes that's a positive, especially for a young pitching staff. There's Walker who started off 0 for 7 in the series and had a 2 for 4 night last night. So 2 for 11 in the series. The average when he came in was over 300 in the month of July and it dipped down just under 300 to 294. Had a pretty good month of July, as did most of the Pirates. They won 20 of the 30 games in July. And that enabled them to cut the Cardinal lead from 9 to 4.5. And the start of play today, they are five and a half back. They lost yesterday, but the Cardinals also lost to Colorado. So the Central Division standings, Cardinals five and a half ahead of Pittsburgh. Chicago nine and a half back. The Reds 18 and Milwaukee 22 and a half back. Two balls, two strikes. 
And for those of you that, and we all are fans of Josh Harrison, the Cincinnati native. Love to see him in a red uniform someday, but he's still on the disabled list, has been working, taking ground balls, and swinging the bat. He's hopeful of coming back soon, early in August, into this Pirate lineup. And they're looking forward to getting him back because he's a guy that can play everywhere. He adds energy. It's a fire starter. Yeah. Everybody needs somebody like that. Highly energetic, emotional player. Wherever you put him, he makes something happen. Fouled off but held on to by Barnhart. That's three strikeouts in an inning and two thirds for Sampson. Another strikeout on a fastball. Pirates having a tough time picking it up right now. That's a four seam fastball, but it's still got that late little bit of life and a little bit of run to it right there at the end. Here's Cervelli, 301, five homers and 33 knocked in. Cervelli had a big hit in the ninth inning last night, coming in late in the game for two final at bats. He kept the line moving for the Pirates, who ended the game with the bases loaded and the tying run at third. Chapman struck out Marte, and the Reds had a victory. Now, we talked all week about who might start on this Sunday and would they bring up a starter. And with tomorrow off, Cowboy, it's almost like, and you've said it all along, you think Kelvin Kivas Sampson is a guy, kind of guy that definitely is going to help you in the bullpen, might be a starter, but you almost look at this day as a bullpen day because you got tomorrow off. So you can use, empty your bullpen. Why bring up a starter? See, give these guys a chance to pitch today. Well, it, you would like to see Kiva Sampson pitch six or seven innings as you did with Iglesias yesterday. But if it doesn't work that way, you can still have an opportunity to get some of your guys in the bullpen that have not gotten work some work. Left field in his tracks is Schumacher. Skip has it. Six up, six down for Sampson. Bruce leads it off when we return. Daryl Howell from Batavia, Ohio, will win this beautiful new Tundra on display at Great American Ballpark. Register for your chance to win at an upcoming game by seeing your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Jesse's still looking at that truck, wanting to drive it away. I'm still driving my 1986 Toyota Land Cruiser. It's still, I'm over 300,000 miles, and that thing keeps on keeping on. Hey, if it works. Amen. There's Jay Bruce at 260, 17 homers and 60 knocked in for the Reds right fielder. Speaking of the month of July and good numbers, Bruce continues the last two months, which have been very productive for him. 
He's now tied for seventh in extra base hits in the National League. And he's had a run knocked in in each of the last six games, all told 11 runs batted in. They've been producing runs. Four game hitting streak as he steps in, had a run scoring double last night. Still sitting on 199 homers. One more than Barry Larkin, of course. And four behind ED, Eric Davis. Ball and two strikes. Everything he throws is right about there. Knees are below, huh? Charlie's got that, that sinking fastball, and when he takes a bit off with the breaking ball or the changeup, as he does with the curveball here, it's almost like the ball stops before it gets to the plate because you're expecting the ball to come straight and then have that late life running away from you, and then that ball just looked like it stopped and just dropped straight down. There's Marlon Bird at 252, 18 homers, 38 knocked in. Heading towards another 20 homer season. Marlon last night had a big triple on the ball that McCutcheon misjudged and scored on a sacrifice fly. They'll overshift to the left side against him. in there. Success of a good breaking ball people talk a lot about it. They say you need arm strength to throw a fastball but you also need arm strength to throw a, a good breaking ball. All right. Arm speed and hand speed as well. Back to back strikeouts and the two to three put out. And there comes the Reds catcher, Tucker Barnhart at 256, three homers and eight knocked in for the Reds backstop. Now Charlie Morton is not going to give you a steady diet of breaking balls. He's not going to give you a whole lot of change up. The majority of pitches that you will see will be sinking fastballs, and then he will vary his pitches off of that. All Morton is trying to do is to get every batter to speed up to try to catch up to that sinker or adjust to that sinker to try to lean out over the plate to catch it or to pull off of it. And then he drops that curve ball of the change up in there. One ball one strike. On the corner ahead of another hitter one and two. Well, Sampson's been living with his fastball in the first two, and Charlie Morton's working backwards, living with his changeup and his breaking ball so far. And he freezes him. Three straight strikeouts here in the second. Going to the third, Alvarez will lead it off.
debut. I'm Jim Day. The other night, Kiva Sampson pitched one inning, two strikeouts in his major league debut. And I talked to him after the game, and he said he got 280 text messages after the game. And he said, you know what? You only get one debut. So he sat there for a couple of hours and answered every single one of those texts. Also got the ball from his first strikeout, which he loves. And also said the next day that he was shocked to find out that he would start today. He didn't know Friday night, and nor did Brian Price. They had not decided who was going to be Sunday starter when Kiva Sampson made his major league debut. But as it turned out, it was a quick inning. So it ended up being like a bullpen day two days before his start, which he would normally do. And Brian Price says he wanted to play off of not only that momentum, but the momentum of his last start at AAA and just keep it going and see what this kid has. Says he has a very repeatable delivery and is excited to see what he's got. Don't mess with a good thing, and it's been a good thing for Kivas. Here's Pedro Alvarez to lead it off in the third. Yeah, that last start in Triple A for Kivas Sampson was eight innings of shutout baseball. Alvarez, 235, 15 homers, 51 knocked in. Reds over shift to the right side against him. Luke Frazier in a halfway position at short. Staying away is Sampson. One ball, two strikes. What do you remember about your debut? <laughs> I'm scared to death. <laughs> Actually, the, the one thing that I can remember, I'll tell you after this picture. Did he go? No. My mom, I was in Atlanta, so I had all my family over there. The only person I've ever been able to hear in a ball game is my mom. Even when I was in high school, yeah. <laughs> coming up in college, and I can hear my mom. I, I'm on the big league mound, getting ready to throw my first pitch, and I hear her scream out, "Come on, Jeffrey!" <laughs> and I, that locked me up, and that locked up Pedro Alvarez. Four strikeouts for Sampson. Right at the knees. I like that pitch. Now you make some money down there now. Here's Sean Rodriguez, the third baseman, one out with Morton on deck. And after that first pitch, I had to step off the mound and then throw that pitch. But I realized that defense in the big leagues was a whole lot better than on what I was used to. Because they hit some rockets off of me <laughs> and they just ran them down. I thought, oh man, all I got to do is just throw it over the plate. Pass Frazier down the third baseline. Schumacher will track it down, but not before Rodriguez will roll into second with a two base hit. Rodriguez. Takes a hanging breaking ball and jerks it right past the diving Todd Frazier. So here's Morton run around second one out. Reds expecting a bunt from the Bucko pitcher. Morton at 067. No homers and one knocked in. No sign of bunt there. Steps out, checks with Rick Sofield, the third base coach. And as usual, Nick Leva in the first base coach's box for the Buccos. Suarez trying to keep Rodriguez tied at second. And no indication of a bunt there either. Drops back about five steps at third. Same thing at first. For Ivan de Jesus. Well, 
that breaking ball is in a perfect spot. That's now five strikeouts for Sampson. Back to the top of the order, Polanco with a runner at second. Seen a couple of strikeouts now, even though this is the pitcher at the plate, set up by that firm, low fastball down in the strike zone. Now Sampson facing this lineup for the second time. If he keeps the ball down there like he did to Alvarez, he's fine throwing fastballs. It's the ball that is up about mid thigh that gets you in trouble. Polanco, his first strikeout victim, swinging on a 3 2 pitch and an eight pitch at bat to lead off the game. Barnhart. Setting up down and away. Hit last night. Polanco's now been on base safely in 21 of the last 22. Back to back change ups from Sampson to go 2 and 0. That last pitch just off the edge. Good eye by Polanco. Rodriguez taking a big lead off second and Suarez you look out there he's almost got an inclination that I mean, where he is and the way Barnhart likes to throw now behind three and oh no chance for that and there's ball four first walk issued by Sampson and that brings up Marte who flied out first time up and Barnhart will go out and talk to his right hand. Hey on the road traveling I want to watch your Reds well subscribe to MLB.tv premium for live or on demand on every over 400 devices real time highlights live look ins pitch tracking and a whole lot more blackout and other restrictions apply visit MLB.tv for details. Two on, two out for Marte in it. 288. Starling's 10 game hit streak went by the boards. 0 for 5 last night. But he's had a very productive year. Been right around the 300 mark. a liner and a base hit that's going to get Rodriguez home Polanco goes from second to third here comes Marte into second and the runners coming to the plate here comes the throw it's not going to be in time aggressive base running by Polanco he just kept rolling around third the Reds did not execute the relay fast enough and they get two runs out of this double Looked like Suarez was moving towards a play at second base. This ball's in the left center field gap. And with a runner at first base with some speed, left center field gap, they're going to try to score him if possible. And the Reds did not play that well. A perfect relay, and they probably get him at the plate. As it turns out, they, they don't execute the relay. Two runs score, and that brings McCutcheon to the plate with Marte now at second. So for Marte, runs batted in number 55 and 56 on the season. Take another look. See the ball going into the left center field gap. I don't know that he ever touched the plate. He did come back and touch it after the play. 
But did the, did his foot hit the corner of the plate when he slid the first time? Two balls, one strike. And the corner, two and two. McCutcheon struck out swinging in the first. Talked about elevation, and that's exactly what happened with Marte at the plate, Cowboy. A difference of about six inches, and he hit that rifle shot into the alley. Big league hitters adjust quickly, otherwise, they are not big league hitters. They see you once, they know what you got, and they adjust the second time around. Two two. Pretty impressive company for the man they call Kutch. That went into the upper deck, but way foul. Well, if he's hitting 455 with two outs and runners in scoring position, they ought to put an L in there. <laughs> Clutch. And he is. He started off when the Reds came back to sweep the Pirates in the opening series here in Cincinnati. Started off with a horrible month of July, but since the month of May is. At 327. It's got him right around at the 300 mark. Look out. In sabermetrics terms, that would qualify as high leverage production. <laughs> and you knew he wasn't physically 100% that whole first month, Cowboy, but he never said boo, never talked about injury, never talked about. What was wrong? He Every, just kept playing. Everyone else wanted to talk about. Yeah, it. but he said, "There's no excuses. I need to do better than what I'm doing." And he played every day. That's a teammate. Two two. And we'll go full again. Three balls, two strikes to McCutcheon. Third batter with eight or more pitches in an at bat for Sampson this time against McCutcheon. Here comes number 10. Off the glove of Suarez. It'll be an error on the red shortstop. The runner Marte held at second did not go to third. So an error on Suarez. And the Reds will have two on, two out. And here comes Jeff Pico to try to settle down his young right hander. Didn't quite get his feet set on the ground ball to Suarez. You could see him reach for the ball. He was still moving. Looked like he tried to plant that right foot and catch the ball at the same time, and it just didn't quite come off. He's made some spectacular plays and ironically some of the errors that he's committed have been on the more routine plays. Concentration mechanics something that Freddie Benavides has been working with him on consistently in the last few weeks. And that's part of the concept of having him up here to, to watch him at the major league level. Well it, it's very similar to what we talk about with the young pitchers that are coming to the big leagues You've got a young short shortstop trying to make his way it's still about experience 
Because you know on the ground ball, Suarez, the first thing he's thinking, I've got to get this ball quickly because McCutcheon's got good speed, and he just tried to hurry a little bit too much. His gun popped out to Frazier first time up. Break the ball drops in there for a strike. And it's 0 and 2. Hit hard. Suarez makes the play and gets the out. Well, he <laughs> gave up a runner but saved a run. That was a great play there. Out of bounce back at short. Suarez saves a base hit, saves a run. Still 2 0 Buckos. you need for that day's game Reds live presented by Ray St. Clair roofing. Picture perfect day for. Baseball or just about anything else you want to do at Great American Ballpark today six sell out of the season last night three great crowds. 35, 34, and last night here at Great American Ballpark, 42,284, the sixth sellout of the season. There's Suarez on the threshold of 300 at 299, five homers and 18 knocked in. Three runs batted in last night, a double and two sacrifice flies. And Cowboy, just like you talk about young pitchers who will make three great pitches and then make a mistake and have to pay for it, a uh, young infielder, same story. You'll make an error, but then come back with a play like that to save a run. Two and one. Well, when you're bringing youngsters to the big leagues and you see them develop before your eyes, they're going to make mistakes. And it's just it's just the way it is. But they're also going to make some fascinating pitches and fascinating plays. Alvarez will hold on. He and Walker collide but Alvarez eventually does hang on. And Suarez is retired for the first out of the bottom of the third. I mean, if you think about it George when. As we watch these two come together on the catch, the taller man usually gets the baseball. <laughs> taller and bigger. If you think about it, when, when Johnny Cueto first came to the big leagues, Mike Leake, straight out of Arizona State, Homer Bailey. That was a that was a tough transition for all of those guys. But yet 
a year later, it seemed like everything started to really smooth out and things were happening and folks were getting awfully excited. And I think you're just seeing a changing of the guard. It's just every team goes through this. But you still got some big time veteran bats that are out there to pick up the mistakes for some of your young pitchers. And you need that that two. I think that's the one thing I'm sure you know you look at a Michael Lorenzen uh, who really attached himself to Johnny Cueto while he was here to learn everything he could from him. You know, when you came up a guy like Mike Kruko who you know exactly not a great broadcaster with the Giants but you know there are different ways to lead a team and on a pitching staff a veteran pitcher like like a Bronson Arroyo who mentored so many of the young pitchers here early and there's a shot to the right side through by Yvonne De Jesus a one out base hit for the Reds first baseman and that'll bring Sampson to the plate. I can just remember Mike Kruko telling me you can change speeds on your curveball. I'm thinking well, it's my curveball. It, it is what it is. No no you don't understand. And just watching him and watching Rick Russell who we called Big Daddy at the time. I thought they're that speed and one of them's 69 one of them's 78 one of them's 84. It's just a, it's a learning process. And when you have veteran guys doing that on the field and then you think well I know my breaking ball is as good as is. Then you start to experiment with it a little bit you start to develop it experience and success come. Sampson showing bunt. Misses it 0 and 2. But when they tell you that in the beginning you think. Uh, but you have to see it and you see someone that is successful with it. You try it a little bit maybe in the outfield or in the bullpen. Then you slowly start to take it to heart. Morton to the stretch still showing bunt is Sampson. And they'll chase De Jesus back to first. It's a gradual change from a visual standpoint for the fans and the folks that are watching. But it also is the the individual's willingness to change and to kind of branch out a little bit. It's the only way you can get better. Doesn't get the bunt down, so unsuccessfully trying to advance the runner. He's out. That's strikeout number four from Charlie Morton. Two away back to the top of the order, Brandon Phillips. We talk about improved hitting, but improved pitching too. This young rotation, the last time through Wednesday, a win against the Cardinals for Anthony Holmberg, his first major league hit, and a win Thursday against Pirates. Lorenzen pitched well, lost on Friday, and then of course Rysel Iglesias yesterday, six and two thirds innings of four hit, two run baseball. Brandon bounced the second first time up. You know, and you learn different ways. I remember Daryl Kyle had one of the best break, best breaking balls of his oh, era. It was nasty. And wherever he was in Colorado or in St. Louis, you know, pitchers would, other pitchers, young pitchers would fight to play catch with him. Give they me a wanted tip. to see what that was like. And not everybody can throw a breaking ball, but you have to find out. You were one that had to tinker with are you going to throw a curveball, a slider, a split finger? You went through the whole repertoire before you finally found something to work for you. Right. And it, it comes back to what I was saying earlier. It's it's the willingness to make an adjustment and to change because if you just try to stay with the one thing that's not working because you're scared to branch out, you're never going to get any better. And you're going to end up in Triple A or out of the game totally. This this game at this level is about incremental adjustments, not huge adjustments, but just small adjustments in game and from game to game. Three and out of Brandon. Line drive over the outstretched effort of Walker. Stop it at second will be De Jesus. Base hit for Phillips. Two on, two out for the Reds, and here comes Schumacher. 
you watch hitters like Brandon Phillips. This is a sinker that runs back over the plate, but yet he shoots it right over the head of the second baseman. Now this is the same guy that hit two balls into the left field seats in the same game. Hitters change. They adjust from one pitch to the next and from pitcher to pitcher. So if you're the pitcher, wouldn't it make sense that you would adjust the same one? You better. His Schumacher dribble one in front of the plate. Morton threw him out first time up. Skip in his career has had a goodly number of at bats against this right hander. Coming in at 410 for 25 against Charlie. Reds trail 2 nothing. Down to short. They'll flip to second and get the final out of the inning. Rich strand up here, their first two left on. They get their first two hits, still trail two nothing. And show you what's happening with the All Star Legacy projects and let you know how you can help. It's Tuesday, starting with Reds Live at a special time at 6 o'clock here on Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. In the second half of that Reds Live, we're going to bring you some special vignettes featuring especially what happened around the All Star Week in which the legacy projects will be lasting for years to come. And then during the game, we'll be answering the phones, have some special giveaway I shouldn't say giveaways with some special uh, two tiered level bags worth of Reds goodies that you can get with a donation to the Reds Community Fund. We'll be talking to Charlie Frank the director executive director of the Reds Community Fund and so much more. We raised a ton of money last year. We're looking forward to doing it again and we need your help. A long fly ball to right center field that kicks off the bottom of the wall and they're going to hold Walker at third as they finally track it down and he'll chug in with a three base hit. Neil Walker's asking what the heck happened. I mean he hit it. I think he thought it might have been out as it turned out it hit the bottom of the wall and with Bruce coming in from right bird from center it hit the bottom of the wall and sped past both of them and. Clint Hurdle's going to come out. The question exactly what did happen. It looked like it hit the yellow line, George, up right where the fans are. And it kicked right past both Jay and Marlon Bird. And they may look at this. There was a fan standing there with the glove, but the ball looked like it hit below never, where the fan was. He never got his glove near it. it. No, he was it was about three or four feet behind the wall and Joe West the crew chief coming out with Kerwin Danley was back to you and they're probably going to go to the video to check it but 
I mean, it appeared very clearly that it bounced off the wall. Yeah, the trajectory of the ball is what made it hit the way that it did and then carry him so far back. I mean, that was a very high ball. You can see the man in red reaching out. So Clint Hurdle will come out and ask them, are they going to check it? And I think they're going on their own to check it. Joe, I think Joe West is saying, we got it under control here. I can hear Joe now. Number one. <laughs> we don't believe that the ball was a home run. Number two, we don't believe that the fan touched the ball. Number three, if you want to challenge it, then you've got to ask us right now. Uh, Joe West on the horn to New York City along with Kerwin Danley. And Brian Price will just sit and watch. If the, it if Peters Cowboy if the ball had hit a glove it would have dropped straight down it it caromed yes. 25 feet from the wall. I don't think it touched the hit the yellow fans glove. Yeah there's that padding on the top is very firm very, very firm and it, the ball will spring off it it's designed so that someone doesn't get hurt either a player reaching over there or a fan coming to try to make the catch. If it had hit a glove, it would have dropped right on the warning track. So the umpires are making the review, and not a challenge by Hurdle. Crew chief review. They're wow. calling it a home run. Must have hit his glove. We'll take another look at the replay. There's a bar on top of the yellow. Does it hit that? See the the like a horseshoe bar? That's what it must have hit. There's a bar at the end of the walkway down the stairwell. Oh now with that angle, you can see it hit the bar. Yeah. Didn't hit the our, glove. Now from our previous angle, it looked like it hit the wall right in front of the man with the glove. That's the culprit right there. That angle down the line helps you big time. Well, bad news for the Reds, but the correct play. It didn't hit the leather of the fan. Didn't hit the yellow, but hit that metal bar. That's why it caroms so far. So it's 3 nothing Pittsburgh, a leadoff home run now for Neil Walker. And here's Cervelli who flied out first time up. Down to third, tricky hop, but Frazier handles it. Cervelli's retired first out of the fourth inning. That's what replay and umpire review is designed to track down, and they did a good job of doing that. The right play was called, even though it burns the Reds for a round tripper. Yeah, those are tricky out there, especially when they're right close to that yellow line. I mean, those bars are there for a reason. They're at the end of every stairwell, so that if somebody's coming down the stairwell and they, they lose trip. their balance, they don't trip, flip right over. They're not going to end up on the water wall. track. There's Alvarez struck out looking in the third. One ball and one strike. Slap the other way and out of play. Okay. 
been a busy week for the Pirates with the deals that they made in their bullpen and some of the players that they have added. They expect to have Michael Morse in town tomorrow. He still has not joined the club, and you figure Morse is going to get some playing time at first and I in the would, outfield. I would say so. A big bat. That's a swing and a miss. So chances are Pedro Alvarez will lose some at bats in the next two months of this season with Morse in town. 0 for 2, two strikeouts for Pedro, and here's Rodriguez. Backdoor breaking ball. The bottom fell out of that pitch. So two away. Base is clear, and here's Rodriguez who doubled to start the rally in the third. He had an at bat last night, singled as a pinch hitter against the Rolders Chapman. To keep the inning alive. Morton, the pitcher, due up next. In the air to center field. That'll stay in the park. Marlon Bird in for Hamilton today. He'll haul it in. But a leadoff homer by Neil Walker. His tenth of the year makes it three nothing Buckos. Ford go further. By Meyer, find more for a healthier you at Meyer. And by Cincinnati Children's, ranking third in the country on United States News and World Report's best children's hospital. Happy you to tweet your strongest fan photo using hashtag OhioDataStrongFan, and you might just be the person to see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Yeah, see that phone's a T-Mobile phone you got, right? Uh-huh. It works pretty good, huh? There's Todd Frazier, line one to left. First time up. Frazier, Bruce Bird do up here in the bottom of four. Down to third, but foul. Three runs, three hits for the Buckos. No runs, two hits, and an error for the Reds. Balance swing looped into center field. McCutcheon has it, and there's one away. As we talked about, there are a lot of the Reds that have had substantial numbers of at bats against Charlie Morton, and the uh, top of this order lists exactly that as the Pirates lead this by a score of three to nothing. And pretty good numbers, too, Cowboy. 
I would say so. Jay's two home runs in his career against Morton and the bottom line as you look at it in terms of total at bats. I mean Schumacher's had 26 at bats. Phillips has had 34 at bats. Bruce has had 30 at bats. So they've seen him a lot. I think it also tells you a little bit about Charlie Morton. What you and I were talking about earlier. He can be Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde when it comes to that sinker. When the sinker's on, really doesn't matter what kind of numbers you've got because he he can be dominant. But when it's not, that's when the Reds have put the hammer to him. Right now, he's got that sinker working a little bit. Cervelli sets up down and away. Here's a 2 1. That's dribbled to the right side. And Morton's really kind of reinvented himself a couple of times. He came out of Connecticut, was a great high school performer, and he was more three quarter. And then remember back in 2009, he patterned himself after Roy, Roy Halliday. And exactly. you thought you were looking at Halliday every it, time you it, faced him. It was identical. And then he got hurt. Yep. He had the Tommy John and then the hip surgery. And he's back up again from where he was. That's a swing and a miss. That's a strikeout for Morton, who struck out the side in the second. That's his fifth strikeout of the afternoon. It's the second time today that he's gotten Jay with that curveball, and that's a pretty good one there. That ball starts up, and it gets out of the strike zone. That's the key to the breaking ball on the swing and miss. You want to start it in the hit zone where the hitter says, I can smash this, and then get it out of the zone and off the plate quickly. Two way, and here's Bird, who also struck out back in the second. Just a bit outside. There are a lot of people that are trying to emulate Roy Halliday back then, though, too. Man, he was lethal. But you're right, George. It, when you watched Morton for a time there, his mechanics, the little body lean that he had almost a little crouch as he would turn very very similar to Roy Halliday and his results were awfully good as well and they looked a lot I mean their body style was the same and we, we, I remember putting the two of them together in a split screen and you thought you couldn't tell the difference of who was whom one and one but I think what you also have to understand is as a pitcher you've grown up using certain parts of your body that have developed over a period of time and those are the muscles that you have to continue to use when you change that drastically you got a problem and he did grass cutter down to third Rodriguez has it birds retired another one two three for Morton Reds trail three nothing. T-shirt Tuesdays presented by Rice Krispies Treats. 
For all Tuesday home games, you can purchase a package for $25 and get a Reds ticket and an exclusive All-Star themed T-shirt. Purchase your All-Star T-shirt Tuesday package today by visiting Reds.com slash Tuesday. Three runs, three hits for the Pirates. They lead the Reds 3-0 as we head to the top of it. Inning number five. Charlie Morton in the pitcher spot. Ninth in the order will lead it off, followed by Polanco and then Marte. Morton struck out first time up. Six strikeouts for Kivas Sampson in his four innings of work. He allowed two doubles and a walk and an error produced a couple of runs in the third. Then the homer by Walker made it three nothing in the fourth. Fun weekend with the Pirates in town. Great crowds all four days with the Buckos here. Pirates, of course, will be coming back in September. Pirates and Cardinals, the second week of September in a long homestand. Popped up right side. De Jesus giving chase. He'll run out of room. And it was a reunion weekend. We talk about the Big Red Machine era of the 70s. Well, the Eugene, Oregon Reds team in the minor leagues was managed by Greg Riddock. You remember Rid? I do. They were in town celebrating a reunion. They had about 12 or 13 guys. They were at the ballpark last night. I got a chance to see him this morning. Riddock was there, and that's the team Mario Soto was on. Paul Moscow was on it. Fly ball into right. Jay Bruce is there, one away. Greg Riddock is still in baseball. He's a Colorado native. In fact, one time he. Ran the minor leagues for the Reds under Bob Housem, and a lot of people thought he was on his way to be a general manager. It never did happen here, but he was one of the first guys as a coach and a former player that was involved in the emotional, mental, psychological way of approaching the game of baseball. I mean, you'd sit and talk with him, and you'd talk about life more than you talk about the game. I guess everybody needs. That kind of support somewhere along the road. Here's Polanco. Struck out and walked. Sometimes with all the statistical measures that we have out there today and the video and all the things that go in, you have a tendency to forget these guys are not robots. They have they have families, off the field problems, arguments. I mean it's and then you bring it to the ballpark and you still have to perform in front of Forty something thousand people. One ball, one strike to Polanco. High fly ball in the short right. Who's going to get there? Bruce calling off Phillips. Two away. A nice weekend to see some of those guys from 75. And a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game, brought to you by Miller Light. Now, Jay Bruce last night on the post game interview with Jeff Pecoro, you know, he, he made a particular point of saying how good it's been this weekend to have Zach Cozart back on the bench and Devin Mezzarocco back on the bench. Now Cozart, everybody leads in different ways. Zach was always a leader, and Jay said particularly he was he's your everyday guy. He's always there for you. He's always by your side. And those kinds of teammates and those kinds of people that you work with every day help to build a family. You know, Zach's an encourager. And I think that other guys feed off of that. May not be a the, the rah rah guy, the big vocal guy, but when you've got a guy that's always pushing you in the right direction, guys tend to gravitate towards that person. Because this game can get real negative. Marte flied out and double the left. I mean, that's human nature. You want to be around folks that are happy, that are yep. positive, that. Look at the glass half full, not half empty. I mean, what was the greatest asset that Tony Perez brought to the ballpark? Yeah, he knocked in a lot of runs, hit a lot of homers, but always had a smile, always made you feel good about yourself. Fly ball to left, Sean Casey, go down the list, guys like that. That's a settled down inning for Sampson, one, two, three. Here comes Barnhart when we return.
Thanks to everyone who has been a part of the Fan Express program this season. I'm Jim Day. I'd like to send out a very happy 87th birthday to one of my favorite people on earth, the widow of Joe Nuxall, Don Zetta. Don Zetta talked to Kim and his wife last night. They said you'd be watching today. Hope you're having a great birthday. And what a terrific lady, Georgian Cowboy. And there's not a day that goes by that we don't miss the old left-hander here at the ballpark. Barnhart to right. Polanco will haul it in. You're right, J.D., when we had a chance, Cowboy, last night to sit for a while and talk with Kim and Bonnie Nuxall and got a complete update on Don Zetta. And uh, Don Zetta, we send our love. We send our affection. We send our best wishes for 87 and a whole lot more coming up. Um, you know, we talk about the moments that you spent at the ballpark. Some of your fondest memories came with sitting with the old left-hander. There's no doubt about that. And it was always great when it's back when we used to have a post-game show. Yeah. On the radio, sitting down there. Joe would come in, grab a little Braunschweiger. <laughs> of course, we couldn't understand how he could eat that stuff. <laughs> Uh, good job by Rodriguez. He takes a tricky hop and turns it into a put out. Suarez retired. Fly ball out, then a ground ball out. Two away, and here comes De Jesus. And you talk about those moments. Remember when Nuxi was there for the unveiling of his statue? <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. There was the post game show, you know, round and third heading from home, but we, we enjoyed the pre game show, which meant sitting with him down in the dugout or by his locker in the old days at Riverfront and just talking baseball and the days when he used to throw BP every day, too. Yep. I don't know how he did that. Yep. <laughs> He'll always live on as one of the greatest Reds of all time, a Reds. Hall of Famer and a true baseball Hall of Famer. Kim Nuxall had a great line when he was honored after Joe's passing. He looked down at no one, he looked up to everyone. That was Joe Nuxall. He always made everyone feel special, he always made everyone feel that they were the most important person that he was talking to on that day. Happy birthday, Don Zetta. Well, he had to look down at Marty because he was two and a half feet taller. <laughs> He's the best boy. So here comes Hal Waldrop. Waldrop just called up from the minor leagues. He'll get his debut performance hitting for Sampson here in the fifth as the Reds try to close this three nothing gap. Cowboy, we had a chance to watch him a lot in spring training. Boy, did he hit some tape measure shots. There's no doubt about that. Likes the fastball close to him. Strong fella. A pretty good number they gave him when he came up. Mike Leach's old number, 44, and there's been some pretty good Reds over the years. Adam Dunn Ward, E.D. Ward. That tells you what they think of you when they give you a decent number, huh? Not 79. <laughs> Swing and a miss. So Waldrop comes up dry, and this hit bad. Nuxie always remembered here, and on this day we remember Don Zetta. Happy birthday, Don Zetta, 87.
Pirates lead it by a score of three to nothing. The runs for the Buccos, a double by Sterling Marte, makes it two nothing in the third inning, and a home run by Neil Walker will be challenged. As it turns out, it hits the railing above the yellow line. A homer says Joe West, three nothing. The Buccos have a lead. On the other side of it, Charlie Morton's been pitching dandy, three hits over five innings. He's holding on to a three nothing lead. And Kiva Sampson, Cowboy, your report card from him. He goes five innings, allows three hits, three runs, and strikes out six. I thought he threw the ball pretty well here today. He was able to throw his breaking ball for strikes. The changeup was a little off the plate, but he threw it. And the one thing that I noticed as the game went along, instead of having just the high fastball, he was able to get some balls down in the strike zone with some good velocity to it. Here's Pedro Villarreal will take over in the top of the sixth inning. He'll face McCutcheon, then Gung, and then Walker. 16th appearance for Pedro with a one and three record. Finally got that first major league win in 26 innings. A season where he's been the long man and the mop up guy out of the bullpen, and he's given the Reds some important innings. One ball, two strikes. On the scoreboard, they're underway. Colorado and St. Louis are scoreless in the first. Cubs are leading Milwaukee one nothing in the first. In the fourth, Atlanta trails the Phillies one nothing, and Miami's leading San Diego two nothing in the fifth. Strikeout for Villarreal and for Reds pitching today. That's the seventh strikeout of the afternoon. You don't see McCutcheon chase pitches up here very often, but he went after a high fastball. Even if you hit that ball, you hit it straight up in the air. One away, here's Gunn. Popped to the third baseman, bounced into a fielder's choice. In fact, in the third, when he bounced out to end the inning, it came one play after McCutcheon reached on an error. There were two on. Gung hit a bullet over the second base bag that, after committing his tenth error of the year, Suarez made a great stop and turned it into an inning ending force play, or else that inning could have produced maybe three or four runs for the Pirates. Young's made some believers out of Pirate fans and the coaching staff in Pittsburgh. Coming over from Korea, you wondered. Now you can look at all the video you want, get all the scouting reports that you can see for a guy that put up big numbers in Korean baseball, but how would it translate to the major leagues? And he's proven that he understands the game, he has good instincts, and he's been right about the 300 mark. And now with Jordy Mercer on the DL with a knee injury, playing on an everyday basis. Two and two. Full count with Walker on deck. You know, I would have thought that. When Gunn signed with the Pirates, he would have been a defensive specialist and more of a slap hitter. Well, he's anything but a slap hitter. I fly ball to right. Bruce under it. Two away. Fox Sports supports proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Boys and Girls Clubs help young people reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens through programs that promote character and leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and a whole lot more. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. 
By the way, Jesse, we say happy birthday to Don Zetta today. I'm not going to be here, but in August, happy birthday to you too. Nice to see you finally turning 39. August 16th for Jesse Jackson. Pop up to Suarez. That's a clean inning for Villarreal. Reds need to get some work done. Top of the order due up. They trail 3 0. Fourth through the sixth at GABP. Wednesday, August 6th, fans 60 and older can take advantage of the Senior Day special and purchase non premium tickets at half price thanks to Tri State Centers for Sight. For tickets, call 513 381 Reds or visit Reds.com. Some restrictions do apply. I'm Jim Day. You know, it's fun when you load up on particularly pitching in the minor leagues to just keep track of these youngsters in their development. Robert Stevenson will go back to the hill tonight for Louisville. And so far in five starts at Triple A, five four no record as you saw, 2.40 ERA. Opponents hitting just 192, and he's got an off the charts strike to walk ratio. They'll play Toledo tonight, and since he has gone to Triple A, the adjustments that he has made. He is all of a sudden taken off and if you believe scouting services he has been the top rated prospect in the red system for a few years now so exciting to see him coming along. I'll well, put J.D. and Cowboy you know we've talked about the ones that are up here. I mean, but you live pitching day in and day out project ahead as you project ahead going into 2016 and you look at the young pitchers we have here and who we have down there. Give us a thumbnail sketch of where this Reds pitching is heading. Down to second. Walker has it. Phillips retired one away. I think I think everyone tends to forget about what John Moscott was able to do when he was here, even though he he hurt his shoulder, but he would probably be in the starting five at this point in time. You look at what Homer Bailey brings to this club, he's going to be one of those starting five next year. Tony Singrani has had a phenomenal arm, but you're still trying to get his pitch ability in the starting rotation. And I'm going to tell you, uh, there are there are, you start looking down the list of different pitchers that are out there. Brian Hunterman made a list. Our, our producer, I hit it and blew me away. Just just when you look at it on paper of all of the names, I mean, we're talking about. 14 15 different names that could be in play as a starting pitcher going into spring training next year and that's without making a move this offseason and all of these guys have a legitimate shot. So. You could. You could put a name in a hat right now. And I love that competition that. 
that we'll see in spring training and throughout next year. Just because you have the starting five on opening day next year doesn't necessarily mean it'll be the same starting five at the All-Star break. Schumacher bangs a single into right, one out, one on, and here comes Frazier. And I was sitting with Brian Price after the game last night, and we were talking about the young pitchers, and he said, you know, and he echoed exactly what you just said. He said, I'm excited about this winter, about all of us in the organization getting together and saying, here's where we are. Here's the strength of our pitching. What do we need to to be there next September? What do we need to be in the postseason? Whether it's pitching or how do we fill in the blanks on our roster? And he's ticking off the same name. Of course, he's a pitching coach who's now a manager. So he's sensitive to those young arms coming up. Here's Frazier line to left, fly to center, 0 for 2. Bruce is on deck. Here in the six, Reds trying to close a three nothing gap. Short lead, Schumacher down at first. Left center field, long run, McCutcheon. Looking up, will haul it in at the warning track, two away. Looked like Frazier was on time with that pitch, but he got it in on his hands because of that hard sinking fastball from Charlie Morton. You know, out of all of those names, George, we could list 15 or 16 off for you. You'd like to believe that you could catch lightning in a bottle with one or two of them and, and really start the season with a big bang with great confidence. Hopefully a couple of those guys will have some really great starts in spring training and, and get themselves confident in moving into the season. There's Jay. There's a two hopper down to second, and in one pitch, Morton takes care of Bruce. So Jay's 0 for 3, and the Reds are 0 for the game so far, trailing 3 0. Game, tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Ohio Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Good job, Joe. All Star Weekend and Reds fans getting together to celebrate baseball here in the Queen City. Be a real second inning of work. He had a one, two, three, six. If you joined us late, Kiva Sampson went five innings, allowed three hits and three runs, struck out six. Meanwhile, Charlie Morton has mowed through the Reds through six. The Reds only four hits on the afternoon. Singles by Phillips and De Jesus in the third. A base hit by De Jesus in the fifth, and a single by Schumacher in the sixth. Here's Cervelli 0 for 2, a fly ball out and a ground out. Check swing. Can Villarreal get to the bag in time? He will. Well, that is absolutely picture perfect from a fundamental standpoint. As soon as the ball came off the bat, 
of Cervelli. Watch Villarreal here. He runs straight for the bag, a dead sprint, gets in a position, becomes a first baseman, and made a difficult play look rather simple. That's how you do it. PFP. Got it. I know probably down in Bradenton, Florida, in the area today, Tom Hume, the former Reds bullpen coach, the former Reds closer, who used to wear you guys out during spring training doing that's probably watching and smiling. Get over there, cowboy. <laughs> Here's Pedro Alvarez, 0 for 2, struck out looking, struck out swinging. You know, when you talk about putting a bullpen together, and you've talked about, you know, yourself, Jeff Shaw, you know, that whole string beginning with Johnny Franco, too. There's a bouncer down to first day. Jesus has it, two away. But who you have as a coach in that bullpen, you talk about a family, that's a whole family unto itself. Yeah, I, I think that's why the, the nasty boys, when Dibble and Charlton and Randy Myers were here, why they were so good, it, they were together on everything. There, there wasn't a lot of, um, well, I want to pitch the ninth or me, me. I, it, it, was a, it was a group oriented from the seventh inning on. And I think they felt like there was an invincibility among that group that allowed them to basically shut everybody down once it got to the seventh inning. And I think there there are some teams out there now you look at the Kansas City Royals trying to mimic that pattern. Now it's awfully difficult to get. Two arms much less three arms of that magnitude but George you know Norm Charlton Rob Dibble and Randy Myers could have closed for any team individually. But yet they were in the bullpen all at the same time for one ball club and it led to a World Series championship. Now you have to have runs and offense and defense to do that. No balls, two strikes to Sean Rodriguez, who doubled and scored in the third and flied out in the fourth. And I mean, during that period of time, you had Larry Rothschild in that bullpen as a coach. You had Tom Hume and Don Gullett, who is one of the most brilliant pitching minds that we've ever been around. All part of building that. Rothschild, by the way, was, I think, part of that 75 Eugene, Oregon team for the Reds in the minor leagues. That was here in town celebrating this weekend under Greg Riddock. And he's still a great pitching coach. <laughs> he's pretty good at his craft. 2 2. Barnard held it there for that extra instant. Doesn't get the call from DJ Rayburn. Think about Larry and Tom Hume and Don Gullett. And a lot of pitching coaches. They're, they're not out there blowing their own horn. They just want their pitchers to be able to be successful and they work behind the scenes not out in the headlines of the newspaper. Two strikeouts for Villarreal six up six down and two innings of work. We're going to go to the bottom of the seventh Marlon Bird then Barnhart and Suarez do to come up for the Reds as they try to erase a three nothing deficit in between. Let's honor America. Here's Joe Zerhusen. Ladies and gentlemen at this time we ask that you please stand kindly remove your hats. And face the American flag. Major League Baseball, the Reds and the Pirates salute the men and women of our armed forces, as well as those who serve to protect in our local police and fire departments at this time. Please help us honor these brave men and women and all our veterans of service and welcome the St. Cecilia Children's Choir as they lead us in the singing of God Bless America.
Action Days presented by Disabled American Veterans and Retire Med IQ. Purchase the Military Appreciation Day ticket package, receive a Reds ticket and a pair of Reds Aviator sunglasses. With each package purchased, the Reds will donate a percentage of the proceeds back to the DAV. For tickets, visit Reds.com slash military. Here we go to the bottom of the seventh. Bird Barnhart Suarez up changes for the Pirates. Pedro Floramon will come into play shortstop with Floramon at short. And here's Bird banging a foul ball to the left side. Over at third, Gunn moves to third, and the third baseman, Sean Rodriguez, moves across from third to first. So it's Gunn, Floramon, Walker, Rodriguez across the infield. Here's Marlin, struck out against Charlie Morton in the second, and then bounced to third in the fourth, 0 for 2. George, look at how far Sean Rodriguez is from first base. I mean, that is an eternity to get back to that bag. That's a long way to go. Probably no organization in all of baseball is bought into the analytics of shifting more than the Pirates. That's hit right at Walker, and you talk about <laughs> these <laughs> analytics working. They sure did here. <laughs> right at Todd Walker, but Sean Rodriguez had to use every ounce of speed to get to the bag in time. Do you think Alvarez could have gotten back? Uh, no. Another look, a bullet. Right at Walker, the second baseman, so it's a 4 3 put out. And while all this is going out, Rodriguez just gets back to the bag to make the play. So one away, bottom of the seventh, and here's Barnhart. Struck out, flat out, 0 for 2. Jumbo Diaz loosening in the red span as we're down to the Six spot in the order. I think that's the furthest I've ever seen the, the first baseman play off the bat. Right there. But Rodriguez can be with play. You on that, yeah. Rodriguez can play in so many other different positions. He can play short. He can play in the outfield. He's quick. He's got some good speed. He's very versatile. I mean, you look at a, a Eugenio Suarez and you think, you know, that may be the best role for him at some point. Play left. He's got a good arm. Play short. Can play anywhere in the infield, and he can rake. Yeah. Jared Hughes has gotten up and started to loosen in the bullpen, and we're in that kind of territory now for Charlie Morton, where you start looking at the bullpen. Yes, only 70 pitches, but for a guy that's had hip surgery, arm surgery, sooner rather than later is usually the way Ben Hurdle handles them. You know, and remember, this is a pirate team that's made some moves this week, bolstering the bullpen. You know, getting Joe Bland in, who could be a starter and a bullpen guy, but with AJ Burnett on the disabled list, they want to be cautious with their starting rotation. But Charlie's only pitched into the eighth inning one time this year. Pitched seven and a third innings of shutout baseball against the Brewers. That was back on June 10th. Two balls, two strikes. Now the Pirates have a wild card slot, but boy, there's a lot of baseball left. Two months of it. Three game bulge over San Francisco. The Giants have the second wild card spot, and the Cubs right behind them. Remember, as this month of September winds down, the Reds will play three against the Pirates here in early September, then three against the Cardinals. Another four against the Cardinals, so seven games against them. There's a bouncer down to short. That'll take care of Barnhart two away, and then the Reds will end the season with three games in Pittsburgh on October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th.
following each and every Reds game here on Fox Sports Ohio. Make sure to stick around for Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda for a complete recap and interviews from the locker room. Stay with us. Another outstanding crowd. 39,596 at Great American Ballpark today. After 42,000 last night. Here's a rocket shot all the way to the wall. Suarez turns first, goes to second, and he'll stop there. Did so I mention that he could rake? He can rake. <laughs> right on cue. Sweet swing, isn't it? Rake would be a slang term for he can flat out hit. Oh, comeback heater. He just takes it the other way. That's not that easy to do when you're expecting a sinker in on your hands. Pretty good pitch read there by Suarez. Now the Reds get a runner to second. Back in the third inning, De Jesus singled and then went to second on a base hit by Brandon Phillips. They have not had many scoring opportunities in this game, and Ray Searage is out to. Talk to Charlie and get his temperature, not physical temperature, but mental and stamina temperature. Give him a little bit of a breather as he's the 85 pitch mark. Jared Hughes is up, loosened, and ready in the bullpen. And the Reds are one base runner away from bringing the tying run to the plate. Here's Yvonne De Jesus, two singles to right. Pitcher spot due up next. Remember the Reds have Votto on the bench from the left side. Switch hitters Hamilton and Pena and Bourgeois from the right side still available for Brian Price as we head down to the final three innings. And Joey has come out of the dugout into the on deck circle. Strike. Now Martin starting starting to miss high not only with the breaking ball but with his fastball. Five homers for the year for De Jesus. Breaking ball clips the outside corner. Off into the seats, though. Both of the base hits by De Jesus through the hole on the right side. This time, just like you mentioned about Rodriguez's athletic ability, he's pulled way wide of the bag. And remember, all three of these outfielders have outstanding arms. They charge the ball. So a base hit is not a guarantee of a run here. Breaking ball misses inside two and two. Just a bit inside. A hanger that fortunately for Morton stayed inside. Two two. Yeah, you were talking about the ground coverage that this Pirates outfield provides their best outfielders playing left. Yep. He could be playing center field. Polanco could play center field. But then again you've got a former MVP in and Andrew McCutcheon that has occupied that spot for some time and I don't see him going anywhere. See Polanco loosen up that arm. He's back two steps deeper now. There's a bouncer down to third but foul. He's come in. So right now a base hit to right. And so far, that's where De Jesus has been dialed in. It's no guarantee you're getting the run home here. He's got a pretty good arm. We've already seen Marte show his off, throwing a run around at the plate earlier in the series. 
Two balls, two strikes. Morton to the stretch. Got him with the breaking ball. Charlie Morton comes up with the pitch that he wants. The Red Strand a runner. They've stranded four, still trail at three nothing. of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Hey Reds fans, cheer on Todd Frazier, Joey Votto, and all your Cincinnati Reds when they take on the Kansas City Royals August 18th and 19th at Great American Ballpark. Wednesday, August 19th, stick around after the game for a special post-game fireworks show presented by PNC Bank. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or reds.com slash tickets. Charlie Morton's day is done. Seven innings, five hits, and no runs. Jaff Decker will pinch it for him here in the top of inning number eight. Now how weird would it be George when the Royals come to town if it's Volquez and Cueto that make those two yeah. runs. You know when the trade was first made I projected on you know five days when Johnny would pitch it he would have pitched in the second game but they pushed him back one day for his first start and right now unless something strange happens it looks like the Reds will miss him but and you know considering the pennant race they're in they probably would rather pitch him against somebody in the American League too. But right now it looks like we'll miss him by a day. But that would be strange, wouldn't it? Oh. <laughs> and we've seen Volquez, but yeah, that would uh, that would be a little different. So a four-pitch walk to the pinch hitter here in the eighth, and that'll. Bring us back to the top of the order. Polanco, the lefty Watson. Tony Watson up and loosening in the bullpen for the Buckos. I got to believe Tony Watson is coming in this ballgame. Now well, they've bolstered their bullpen, that's for sure, with Watson, the lefty, and Soria and Melanson. They've got three studs deep in the pen. Polanco, big swing, and a Foul tip to the left side. Polanco struck out, walked, and flied out. Great to have you with us, George Grant, Jeff Brantley, Jim Day, and the whole crew. Great to be back here at Great American Ballpark for a big homestand. A day off tomorrow, and I think the, this ball club's looking forward to it. Joel Luckup, our statistician, with us. Lucky, great to have you on the case as usual. Down in the truck, our producer Brian Hunterman, our director Roy Alfords. From the stretch is Via Real. Swing and a miss. Jim Mueller, our associate producer, and of course, Kent Dream Weaver and Ron Melanor taking care of our pre and post game show activities. So the Reds try to rally here. Villarreal trying to keep it right where it is. 
and then rally in the eighth and ninth. Oh, and two. And normally, when you've got a left-hander in your bullpen, you use him in a special situations, left-handers only, or left-right, left. Watson, he pitches the eight. And now with Soria, you've got the potential for two closers. You can use either Melanson or Soria in that role. Well, you've got a you've got a chance for Clint Hurdle to to mix and match a little bit with guys that are familiar with that late inning pressure and, and thrive under it. Oh and two. Popped up. Barnhart casting the mask away and hauls it in. First out, and here comes Marte. And we all know, you know once you've been to the playoffs, that's step one. I like and the moves that Kansas City has made this year and the Johnny Cueto deal, all the deals that they've made. Once you've had a taste of it, you say, what do we have to do to go that next step? And I think the Royals set the mold. A lot of people tried to emulate them this offseason with three or four guys in the bullpen every night that just smoked you with gas. So you need three at least. And the Reds set the mold for that with the nasty boys back in 1990. From the stretch via Real, short lead for Deck. Yeah, the Reds had two lefties and Charlton and Myers and, and Dibble as a right hander. But you look at the the Royals bullpen with Herrera Davis and who am I forgetting here the closer they're all right handed the brain just went short circuit yeah Holland Greg Holland and last year Finnegan was part of that mix too who at the end now is a red Big swing down to first, and they just missed catching Decker off the bag. Good job by Barnhart to make it close. Tucker gets that ball a little bit lower. He may have had a pickoff. He had to reach for it. Way off. He got a little stutter step, but the Hazers had to reach high for the ball. The Real ahead of Polanco 0 and 2 before getting him, and he's ahead of Marte here 0 and 2. Break the ball misses for ball one. The Cardinals will come to town to take on the Reds after the off day tomorrow. Di Sclafani on Tuesday, Holmberg on Wednesday, and Lorenzen on Thursday. Now back to the mound. Quick flip to first. There's your second out. The runner advances to second. Cardinal rotation has Lackey against Di Sclafani on Tuesday. Reds live at 7.30. The game will follow. Then on Wednesday it's Holmberg against Carlos Martinez and on Thursday it's Lorenzen against Michael Waka. That's the day game on Wednesday. On the road to Arizona following that. So another big moment in the ball game with McCutcheon coming to the plate and his 66 runs batted in so far they've handled him. He struck out twice and reached on an error. A pad run out there for the Pirates. Look out that got him in the back. Oh. McCutcheon not liking one bit that but clearly no intent with. A pad runner at second. McCutcheon marches down to first. DJ e. Rayburn will walk with him just to make sure.
Yeah, that caught him square in the back. That one just looked like a sinker that just took off. It's spinning. A first and second, two away, and here's Gunn. Popped up, bounced into a fielder's choice, and popped up. Here's in for a sign from Barnhart. Big swing and it's one and one. To the right side, Phillips peering up into the picture perfect blue sky will haul it in. They get out of the jam. Reds need to do some work. 9 1 and 2 do up for Cincinnati. American ballpark hoping for the Reds to rally here in the final two they trail three nothing three three and oh for the Pirates no runs five hits and an error and five left on base for the Reds we go to the bottom of inning number eight the number nine spot in the order will face this left hander who is dominant Tony Watson has Outstanding numbers against the league and Cowboy over the years we found he's had pretty good numbers against the Reds too. Yeah he's had a couple of ball games here in this ballpark that have been not Tony Watson type numbers but for the most part he's been a shut down guy in that eighth inning. Here Jason Bourgeois will pinch hit in the ninth spot in the order and then Phillips will follow. Overall, 200 on the season for Jason. No homers and four knocked in. From the stretch, Watson. Fastball in on the hands, foul back. You look at the numbers with Brandon Phillips on deck. Watson against Phillips. Brandon is two for 13. Todd Frazier one for nine. Jay Bruce one for 18. So those are the kind of numbers you look at when you see Tony Watson. 
Joey Votto has had some relative success four for 15 but no homers and of course Votto is available to pinch it. One away to the top of the order Brandon Phillips bounced to second single to right and bounced to second. What makes Watson so tough. It's pretty much ahead in the count to everybody that walks up there. He's able to locate that fastball down and away. He's able to throw his breaking ball for a strike at any time. If he does get behind in the count, you're not going to see a fastball right down Broadway. He's going to give you a little wrinkle, and it's going to be a strike. We got a problem. Now you're beginning to wonder, right? You know, you go back, and I don't think there was intent on Villarreal's part, but I think very clearly both benches are going to clear. Joey Votto's the first out of the Reds' dugout. He's coming right to the part of this whole thing. They're trying to push each other away. So far, it's just pushing and shoving. Now, you wondered last night when Blanton hit Bird, was there something going on? And it didn't appear that Villarreal's was intent. But here with a 3 nothing lead, and Brandon is being held back. Brandon is irate. They're tussling by the mound. There's pushing and shoving everywhere. I think about half of the players are trying to separate, and the other half are trying to get to the middle of it. Skip Schumacher's in the middle of it. And Brandon Phillips, they've been able to keep out of the middle of it. Todd Frazier there. Freddie Benavides in the middle trying to separate people. Now I don't think that Villarreal hit no McCutcheon on purpose. And you remember, Cowboy, we went through a couple of years where these two teams really went at it back and forth. Well, every time McCutcheon gets hit, whether it's by mistake, whether it's a curveball, a changeup, the Pirates retaliate. Mm -hmm. He's their main guy. But the problem that you have with throwing at Brandon Phillips, you have to remember the Pirates were the ones that broke Brandon's wrist years ago. And that made for a very rough circumstance for Brandon Phillips. Jay Bruce is trying to separate people and they're not finished yet. There's words going back and forth and now here we go back in the middle of the diamond again. And Jay Bruce sense it wasn't over and that everybody in the red side was heading back to the dugout and then Bruce jumped in front of well, Skip Schumacher was telling talking to Francisco Cervelli and that's what escalated this a second time. And here comes Josh Harrison <laughs> who was in the clubhouse and of course not on the bench he's on the disabled list and he runs out there so. Yeah, and you're not supposed to be on the field if you're on the DL. Mm -hmm. Now the, the words aren't ending. They're trying to separate Joe West trying to get everybody back. Kerwin Danley in the middle of it too. They're just trying to split the two teams. And. This one just won't die. And before this is over, this is going to get ugly. And it is. Now there are some punches thrown. Now there's some Frazier's in the center of it for the Reds. Well, Marlon Bird is very upset. I, I know he was upset from getting hit last night. Yep. Well, it starts with a player being hit, then the words start, then a shoving match starts, and Joey, not often you see Joey. Joey is in the middle of it. At first you thought he might be a peacemaker, and he's in the middle of it. Right. Sean Rodriguez is probably the most Marlon Bird and, right now. Marlon Bird and Sean Rodriguez are the main issues at this point in yep. time.
Well, we had two years of seemingly every night you wondered who would get hit first. Then it's quieted down the last two years, but we're right back where we were a couple of years ago, Cowboy, right now. You can see it. Clint Pirtle's got his arms around Rodriguez trying to keep him out of the middle of it. Now they finally split him up. You know, when we went downstairs after the game last night, Cowboy, you, you wondered when Marlon Bird was hit where that might have come from. When Rodriguez yelled across at Bird, you knew that there was something there. Yeah, I don't. I, I did not. I did not think that Villarreal hit. I agree. McCutcheon on purpose. I mean, it, but it, I had a little it, question mark when Blanton just smoked. Yeah. Out of nowhere, because he was down and away, down and away with a changeup, and then all of a sudden, one right at the head. And you can't help but wonder now. You can always give the pitcher the benefit of the doubt. The ball got away trying to get in on Bird. That's where you try to pitch Marlon Bird is in on his hands. But when you miss right at the head, and, and let's face it, in last night's ball game, had Bird not gotten his shoulder up at the last second, that ball would have squared him in the ear hole. Now, at first I thought Joe West was writing something down. He's just cleaning off his glasses. Maybe that's good news because. It's West's decision if anybody's being ejected from the game. Right. He's talking to both Brian Price and he talked to Clint Hurdle. We'll see if any action is taken. Well, there, there's no doubt that Watson hit Brandon Phillips on purpose. But the problem that you have, and it looks like Sean Rodriguez, Sean Rodriguez has been thrown out of the ball game. You would think so. There, when when you look at how this transpired, there was no warning issued. When McCutcheon was hit. So that really allowed Tony Watson to do whatever he wanted to do. And at this point, Watson can't be thrown out of the ball game. Oh, it appears that Bird and Rodriguez, we haven't heard anything yet, but it appears that the two of them have been ejected. We'll see. Looks like Travis Ishikawa is coming on to first base. Yep. Take you back to last night when Blanton came into the game, right on the top of the shoulder, missed hitting him in the head by just inches. And I, I'll be honest with you, I thought that Marlon Bird showed tremendous restraint yep. by not going to the mound. And McCutcheon hit in the back there. You could see that Barnhart was set up inside. When Bird was hit, they were not setting up in and that was a no doubter you know, on the other part of that when gun came to the plate one pitch later via Real's pitch was, was up, up and in. in so I mean again it was spinning it wasn't a fastball it was a breaking ball that was spinning and Brandon gets plunked and then it was on and bird out of the dugout immediately came out. Joe West got in the middle of that. So Bird, it appears, has been ejected. Rodriguez has been ejected. This will be a very interesting finish to this season because the Reds play the Pirates quite a few more times yep. before we finish this bad boy up. Good to have a little edge. And Brandon's on his way back out to first base, and he'll get a rousing ovation from the Reds fans. And Brandon showed some restraint too. Billy Hatcher was the first to grab him to make sure he didn't get out there. Well, let's see if the Reds can turn this into something and turn the energy of this game to the offensive side. JD, you were right down there by the dugout. How did you read it? 
Well, I can I can tell you that Joey Votto has also been tossed out of this game. They said that he aggressively went back out after the pack was broken up and he came back into that pack. So he has been thrown out as well. And uh, Joey was asking the umpires why and they explained it to him and had to forcefully take him down the steps because he was upset once he found out. But uh, you could sense it brewing and you guys talked about it. Marlon Burr was very upset last night after being hit and then uh, Brandon Phillips. Uh, you, you could just sense it in the dugout. Guys were waiting on the steps waiting for it to happen. Now the worst part of this whole thing is that I mean the big bullet that Brian Price had left was Joey Votto. To pinch it somewhere here in the eighth or the ninth and now you take that bullet away. Now we talked about it earlier about the concept of family and Lotto was out fast after Bird was hit last night. Joey was out clearly supporting his teammates and making it clear that he didn't like what was going on. And it appeared he was okay when they broke the first time. Then he came back the second time, and that's when Joe West pushed him away. And then it was subsequent to that that West made the decision that both Bird and Votto would be ejected, and Rodriguez ejected on the Pirate side. Meanwhile, it's two balls and two strikes to Schumacher. Bounced out, bounced into a fielder's choice and single to right. Well, we're back where we were a couple of years ago with these two teams, and it'll add some intrigue. Popped up infield. Walker there. Second out of the inning. And here comes Frazier. Well, the Pirates have the most to lose in a Donnybrook because anybody that they get hurt in an issue like this affects their playoff opportunity. Frazier fouled on the right field line. Todd this afternoon, line to left, fly to center, fly to center, 0 for 3. Bird was out pronto after being hit last night, but Frazier, Bruce, Votto, all quick to come to the support of Brandon Phillips. They were in the middle of it. Two hopper to short, and that'll do it. So it's like the good old, good old times again. Buckos and Reds battling. Menards save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs and your local Toyota dealers proud sponsor of the Cincinnati Reds. Well we alluded to it the way 2012 and 13 went. let's take you back to those days starting with the role Chapman against Andrew McCutcheon in Pittsburgh and then all bets are off. Lee plunks Josh Harrison 
ejected from the game by Larry Vanover, who was playing hurt after no warnings were given at that point. And then Walker gets plunked. And the 2013 14 period Cowboy was every time these two teams played, the umpires, when they exchanged lineup cards, would warn both managers. And subsequently, we usually ended up in a situation like this. I mean, we were at a point where it was almost 30 batters hit. And the Pirates for three straight years led the league and hit batsmen, not just Reds batsmen overall. So here's Jumbo Diaz to take over as we go to the top of the ninth facing Walker. Walker today struck out his first time up against Kevis Sampson led off the fourth with a fly ball that hit the railing in right center field and after an appeal was ruled a home run to make it three nothing then he popped up his last time up the other two runs scored by the Pirates came in the third a double by Rodriguez a walk to Polanco and then a double to left plated two. Marte's double plated two. Walker's homer accounts for the third. So Rodriguez ejected for the Buccos, and Marlon Bird, who was hit by Blanton last night, and Joey Votto ejected for Cincinnati. Of course, when this one's all over, as always, Reds Live post game, first into the clubhouse. We'll get the players' view. We'll hear from Brian Price. You'll get the red side of what transpired today. But whatever anybody says after this is over, I think we've rekindled what was on the front burner for a couple of years. Two hopper down to first. De Jesus has it. Walker's retired one away. As you look at the bottom of the ninth for the Reds, Bruce is due to lead it off. And again, the big loss is Votto being ejected, no longer available to pinch hit. Waldrop has been used, Bourgeois in the game. Hamilton and Pena, the only two pinch hitters left for Brian Price. to third it's a foul ball bourgeois in the game in center field with Schumacher and left and Bruce and right Cervelli flied out bounced out bounced out came in for Rodriguez behind him. Another foul ball down the third baseline. Off day tomorrow. Don't forget Cardinals come to town. Tuesday Reds live at 630 game will follow. Anthony DiSclefani will go for his seventh win of the year against John Lackey. Lackey will go for his tenth. Fifth in St. Louis, Colorado and the Cardinals are scoreless. Cubs lead Milwaukee three to one in the fifth. Atlanta leading the Phillies six two in the seventh. San Diego and Miami. Miami leading two nothing. They're now in the eighth tonight. Washington and the Mets go at it.
Swing and a miss. Right at 97 98 for the big guy, huh? And now it's time for tonight's, or this afternoon, I should say, flamethrower brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. And Big Jumbo dials this one up at 98 miles an hour. Smoking. Little blue by you. Call him make this move. It's good memories, good memories. Who sang that originally? Everybody's covered it. Roy Orbison? Can't remember. I don't know that there's any country music singer that hasn't sung it. Jesse sings it. There's Pedro. One for ten since. Coming up from Triple A, Loremon with two away here in the top of the night. Bounces back to go full. Adam, good bounce back by Jumbo Diaz. Strikes out the final two of the inning. One, two, three. Last round up for the Reds. Jay Bruce will try to get it started. Cincinnati trailing three nothing. Fox Sports One with highlights, instant analysis, live look-ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around is weeknights at 7 Eastern on Fox Sports One and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now, here we are, last roundup time for the Reds. This revamped bullpen for the Buckos with Soria now as a, another component to this final two innings. Now added. Will add 
Some help to Mark Melanson, who is the closer here. Melanson has saved 33 of 34. It's his 50th game of the year. And look at that ERA. He's been money in the bank. Jay Bruce will lead it off. Bruce against Melanson, three for seven. Billy Hamilton is moved into the on deck circle with Diaz due up next, the pitch spot. Big swing and it's one and one. Talk about what Tony Watson does from the left side, similar to what Mark Melanson does from the right side. He won't walk people. He's always around the knees. Good breaking ball, moving fastball. Sometimes you never know if someone can close until you give them the chance. True. Very true. Rocket shot. It's a fair ball. Just past the chalk in fair territory. Bruce rounding first, going to second. Boy, he's hit the ball good. Man. Lead off hitter scoring position for the Reds here in the ninth. Sixth double of the year for Jay Bruce. Oh, Bruce leads it off. Here comes Billy Hamilton hitting for Jumbo. Get on base any way you can. Keep the line moving. Joe's bunt fouls it off. I mean, where the third baseman is playing right now, Gunn, he can make a play on a bunt, but where the second baseman, Walker, is, if he pushes it past the pitcher, he's easily got a base hit. So now both Ishikawa at first and Gung at third drop back to their normal spots with a two strike count on Billy. Barnhart on deck for the Reds. Fouling it off. And again, if you joined us late, Joey Votto did not start. The biggest development from the tussle after Brandon Phillips was hit was that Joey Votto was ejected from the game. Never did get to pinch hit. Ejected along with Marlon Bird. Bird and Votto from the red side, Rodriguez from the pirate side. Bruce will hold it second. One ball, two strikes. And it's a similar to the last time Joey was ejected. He didn't know he was ejected last time and didn't realize it until he was told uh, 30 seconds later. And he was irate when they finally told him here. I mean, if you looked at who was John, there were a lot of other people John just like Lotto was at the same time. You could have picked a dozen people if you're going to do it that way. One and two. Good eye in the dirt. And 
now Joey told at this point that he was ejected at first. I mean everybody was up there yelling and screaming and Joe West evidently told Votto that he had come back a second time and didn't leave when he was asked to leave. But you could have said that about a dozen people. Everybody that all the players that were out there. Uh -huh. In front of the plate, Melanson holds the runner and gets the out. So one away, Bruce still at second. And here comes Barnhart hitting in the sixth spot. Barnhart today struck out, flat out, grounded out. Well, we certainly ratchet up the intrigue of the remaining games between these two teams after what transpired today. They will not see each other again until September, though. Pirates come here the 7th, 8th, and 9th, and then the Reds will go to Pittsburgh to end the season. Clip in the inside corner of the strike zone for strike one against Barnhart. Find a way to get the tying run to the plate. That's the Reds' job here with Suarez on deck. Well, he's got to be out of the game. And he is. They do eject him. I mean, I, I don't think coming. he did it on purpose, but with what happened, he's got to be ejected from the game. And he finally is. And now Melanson is going after the umpire, and so is Cervelli. He may get ejected before this is all over. Well, there is already a warning. And once that's issued, you cut that ball in there like that. And, and granted, I don't believe Melanson no. had any intent at all to hit Barnhart, but it happened. Well, the good news is the Reds have the tying run coming to the plate. Now, here's the crazy part, George. Pirates don't have anybody warming up. They haven't had anybody throwing at all. And now they've got to bring somebody out of their bullpen. You expect it to be sorry. Yeah, it'll be sorry. And the Reds had him on the ropes the other night. Oh, yeah. Well, Melanson arguing that he had no intent in any event after what transpired. You knew he was going to be ejected. Kerwin Danley telling him, you got to leave. And Hurdle saying, it's over. You got to leave. And not only is... Melanson ejected, but so is Clint Hurdle. Yep. The argument really moved at this point after yeah. what transpired the last inning. Intent or no intent, he's saying, I'm pitching inside. And you would agree with him from a baseball standpoint, but the bottom line is after what transpired and a warning had been issued, he's out of the game. And from a baseball standpoint, this gives the Reds a window now. You were talking about intrigue as the season goes on. Well, <laughs> that intrigue has arrived here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, uh, these two teams, for the better part of two years, it was like a heavyweight fight every time they got together. Then things quieted down, and we've Rekindle all those emotions here in two innings. Well, Melanson will exit. Soria will come in and loosen. He'll get as much time as he needs to loosen and be ready. But the good news for the Reds is you got Bruce at second, you got Barnhart at first, and here's a guy with some pop, a Eugenio Suarez, who'll come to the plate. Suarez had two sacrifice flies in. A double to knock in three yesterday. He's sitting on five homers and 18 knocked in. Doubled his last time up.
Well, while the pitching change takes place, time for our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. This day came in the third a double a walk and a double made it two nothing the double by Marte two nothing the Pirates had the lead Walker added a leadoff homer in the fourth three nothing that was against Kiva Sampson who went five innings three hits and three runs. And then with the score knotted at three nothing and after the benches cleared when Brandon Phillips was hit by a pitch. And both benches were worn. Melanson here in the ninth inning hits Barnhart with Bruce on second. He's ejected by the home plate umpire DJ Rayburn. And that brings in Joaquin Soria for his second National League appearance. And Cowboy, he came in the other day in the seventh inning. He walked to, gave up a base hit. Brian Pena hit a blistering line drive back through the middle that would have produced two runs. Soria somehow gloved it and here he is back for his second National League appearance. It's amazing the twists and turns of this game. Here's a Eugenio Suarez popped up grounded out double to right his last time up. Bruce off second Barnhart off first still only one out middle of the infield double play depth for the Pirates. Center field hit pretty good back at the warning track McCutcheon he's got it Bruce will tag from second and go to third. He gave it a ride but not enough in right center field second out of the inning. Here comes Evan De Jesus, two for three, two singles. He's sitting on five homers and 21 knocked in. Soria's story was acquired from Detroit on Thursday. And the American League was three and one with 23 saves. Earlier this year, picked up his 200th career saves. Boys, well, been used to these situations. No stranger to this spot. De Jesus digs in first and third for the Reds. A hard hit shot down to second, but that will do it. So Soria, in relief of Melanson, who's ejected from the game, picks up his first National League save. And the end result, the Buccos three runs, three hits, no errors, four left. The Reds no run, six hits, and an error, and eight left on base. And 
what has been an intriguing couple of innings and what certainly will serve as a blueprint for these two teams for the remainder of this year at least they've rekindled the emotion that really dominated these two teams a couple of years ago teams both of them are Miller moment brought to you by Miller Lite and the story of this day Andrew McCutcheon drilled and that started things going that meant that Brandon Phillips would get drilled both benches cleared and by the time it was all over Joey Votto ejected for the Reds Marlon Bird who had been hit before by Joe Blanton ejected and Sean Rodriguez ejected and result Votto not able to come up to pinch hit in the bottom of inning number nine Votto I rate that he was ejected when if you look at this scrum and you look at the way it developed Cowboy you could have taken a dozen people and ejected them for the way they conducted themselves well that, that happens sometimes when you are the person that the umpires recognize most in Joey Votto popular figure and more times than not when you are a higher rated player a more recognizable player they're looking at you rather than the guy that came off the bench more to talk about still to come Reds live presented by performance Kings Honda.